Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Well, I trust that you have had a uh, good week and that your week has been filled with the testimony of God's goodness. No matter what you've had to contend with, that is what we do. We earnestly contend, according to the writings of Jude, the apostle, we earnestly contend for the faith. We pray in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? And in the power of the Holy Ghost, we receive the victory over things we don't even know we need victory over. Say amen to God. So at the power, at the leading and the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, I want to just get right into this. I don't know how much time I have, but I know I got at least 45 minutes. <laughs> and so we'll take 45 minutes and see what the Lord has to say this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to greet our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your attentiveness and we appreciate your fellowship in the spirit of God that you would come and join in no matter where you're watching, whether you're watching on tablet, phone, computer, later, today, whatever the case is. Thank you for attending to our service. We invite you to come in. We are located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Corville, Iowa. We are a suburb of Iowa City, Iowa, and we thank you so much for just allowing us to come into your home, your living room, whatever the case is. But don't just sit there and be a spectator, be a participator. There is a warm seat of welcome here located here, again, at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. And we do have plenty of space available for you. So if you want to come down, we certainly invite you to come on down, join us. But if you're not able to make it, please get something to write with, take some notes, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you because he has something unique and special for you today. I hope you agree with that prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our YouTube audience this morning? Amen. Praise God. So just by just uniquely different this morning as we we've done this before. This is not a first time, but at the leading of the Lord, I'm just going to minister according to what he has laid on my heart. Uh, I got absolutely nothing. But that's not a bad place to be because I do have a leading and I do have a voice and I know the voice of the good shepherd. And I'm not going to follow any other voice. Is that all right? Yeah. So we delight. Yeah, it is a good place to be, a good place to, to, to light and to see. And we'll take our offering, receive our offering and our announcements in just a minute. Uh, turn it, if you would, for me with to the book of Galatians, the first chapter. Galatians chapter 1. Mm. Thank you, Father. I don't, we don't have any first time guests, so. Glad that you all made it back today. Whatever you've been facing for the last week or a couple weeks or a month or whatever, I'm glad that you overcame it. Amen. The Bible says that we overcome him by what? Come on, say it like you mean it, like you know it, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Your testimony is very important. You need a testimony to overcome. Some people don't want to go through anything, but it is in the process of going through, not being defeated, that a testimony is created. And it causes us to be victorious over the things that challenge us every day. They do come. There is no temptation, Paul writes, that has taken you or come against you than such that is common to man. But God is faithful, say he's faithful, who will with the temptation make a way of escape, that you will be able to bear it. Your way of escape is in the word of God. Uh, I didn't get enough amens, but your word of escape is in the word of God. Amen. And in his word, there is deliverance. Let me have 45 starting right now, please. Galatians, the first chapter, I want you to just hold your place right there. I want to just give you some things that we're going to talk about as we move forward. Again, talking about the potential in every seed, uh, as has been our mandate for the year of 2018. Uh, you can just write these down. These are various teachings from the doctrine uh, or the teaching, excuse me, of Paul to the church at Galatia. Now, there was no church specific at Galatia. There was no Galatian church. There was a group of churches that comprised his teaching. Now, with Paul, what Paul does is he gives a message that is very broad in its scope. He doesn't just talk to one individual or one group of people. 
he talks to a group of peoples or a people group that consists of various churches of various places. Remembering that the Apostle Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Come on, somebody. And in being sent to the Gentiles, the Gentile is not a race of people. It is a non-Jew. How many Jewish people born by birth are in this room today? Nobody. We're all Gentiles. Amen. So with that, this word was sent to us. Say amen to that. So because he sent it to us, he sent it to us, and obviously it's been far-reaching because even now, here we are, as we move into uh, 2018, and man, we're right at 2019. Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> Winter is knocking at the door. <laughs> anyway, with, with, it being, we're, with us being on the cusp of 2019, the word that Paul preached to the Gentile, or excuse me, or to the Galatian church is still relevant today. This is, this is important to remember because some of the things I'm going to read a lot today, and I want to read, I'm going to start at uh, chapter 1 and get into chapter 2, and we'll pull some pieces out of that. But I want you to understand, understand this premise, that the Galatian church was delivered by faith. How many people in here today have been delivered by faith? That should be every hand because that's the only way you get delivered. So having been delivered by faith, what has happened is in the, in the context of the scripture, they have forgotten that. And they have turned back unto their old evil, idolatrous ways and allowed the enemy to try to deceive them into thinking that somehow or another they can do this without him. Oh, help me, Lord. And the reality of it is, is that none of us can do this without him. But many of us try. So, so with that being said, I want you to understand that's the premise that Paul writes from. He's writing about 68 A.D. after the death of Jesus Christ. He's writing. And what he's saying here and he's writing. And, and just so you know, just side notes, you can write it in your notes. He wrote not only this book, but at the same time, he was writing the book to the Hebrews. Paul is writing in context because this is important. He's writing to Jews, say Jews. <laughs> That's important because, see, every, every word that you hear is not necessarily something that comes, that, that blesses you just because you're a charismatic believer and evangel evangelical Christian. You have to have it in the context of Scripture. We can't pull Scripture out and make it fit our needs. Many people have tried that, and they've, they've messed somebody's life up or their own life up because they've tried to pull, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But there's a premise to that. If you don't do the will of God first, that's not going to work. I don't care how much you quote it. Amen. So with that being said, so let me let me give you some of the eight prominent teachings and we'll come back to these as we go. The first one is Christians can fall from grace and be removed from Christ. Christians can fall from grace and be removed from Christ. I know, I know, I know, I know what people teach. They teach that once saved, always saved. They teach that somehow or another, just because you're, you know, because you're born again, you can never not be born again. It's a lie straight from the pit of hell. And if you believe it, you are deceived and you are potential to be a castaway. Yes. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Christians can fall from grace and be. And I'm going to give you several scriptures to look up. I'm not going to go there today, but I just want you to see them. I am going to read some of these, but I'm not going to stop and pause. Uh, for example, Galatians 1, verses 6 through 8, Galatians 2 and 2. Galatians 3, verses 1 through 5. I'll go back over these in just a minute. Galatians 4, verses 8 through 11. Galatians 4, 19. Galatians 5 and 4. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Galatians 6, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to repeat those one more time. This is, again, talking about those who have the potential for, for, to fall from grace. And why this is important is because you've got, a, you've got a prominent teaching that has been in place for many years now that, you know, grace, the, the undeserved, unmerited, the Brother Copeland translation would be that treating you like sin never existed. Uh, people think that just because there's grace that you can do whatever you want to do and that God, you're forgiven. You're just, nope. no, that's not true. Nope. And it's dangerous to believe that because, and Paul addresses that because what he says is that I am, I marvel that you are somehow at this point in your lives so far removed from the gospel that once was preached unto you. Let me repeat those one more time. You ready? I'm going to go through them just one more time. Galatians 1, 6 to 8. 
Galatians 2 and 2. Galatians 3, verses 1 through 5. Galatians 4, verses 8 through 11. Galatians 4, 19. Galatians 5, verse 4. Galatians 19, uh, excuse me, 5, verse 19 through 21. 6, 1 through 8. That's the first prominent doctrine or teaching that, that Paul gives here. Christians can fall from grace and be removed from Christ. Number two, Paul's gospel was a revelation from God. Without revelation, you will not succeed in this life. Without revelation, you and I will not succeed in this life. We all need revelation. What is revelation? The, the, the revealed knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ beyond your capacity to receive it in the natural. Paul stood up, excuse me, Peter stood up one day as they were sitting around the campsite, and Jesus asked the question, said, whom do men say that I, the son of man am? Right? Y'all remember that? Matthew 16, I believe it is. And he said, thou art the Christ, the anointed one. And you have an anointing. You are the Christ of the living God. And Jesus commended him. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. But you have received it by my spirit. How many of you receive things by the spirit of God? Yeah. Every hand should go up. Yeah. If you're not receiving it by the spirit of God, you're not receiving it at all. Right. If your knowledge is coming from your own theology, your own doctrine, then you are receiving it from the wrong space, Amen. wrong place. Amen? Amen? So for that, just as a scripture, Galatians 1 11 through 2, 14. And what Paul does there is he, he, he says, y'all have to forgive me. I'm just country and I'm just going to be me. But my shoe is untied, so I'm going to tie my shoe. Okay, what y'all think? So what Paul says there is Paul says, Lynette, I know I love you, baby, but it's all good. <laughs> Stop it. What he says there is, listen, I didn't have the accolades. I didn't have the resume. I did not have the pedigree to receive this information, but God didn't choose me based on any of those things. God didn't choose you because you have the right degree. God didn't choose you to reveal his son in you because of what your last name is or how much money you have in the bank. He chose you because he wanted you to be the messenger of him. I don't know how many times the Lord's going to bring me across your path, but you ain't saying enough. <laughs> Not the Holy Ghost. And so what he does is he makes his selection based on what his plan is for humanity. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Man of God. God chose you because he had a message for you for you to deliver based on his plan, not yours. Amen. So regardless of what people say about you and your time frame, and, and listen, and your expiration date, right. there is none in God. Amen. So your voice carries significance and weight in the kingdom. Whether or not they want to hear it. God chooses who he wants to choose, not based on anything other than his own plan. Can you say amen to that? So that's the second prominent doctrine. Again, that's Galatians 1, 11 through Galatians 2 through 14. The, the third one, and this is where we're going to focus today as God gives us grace, is justification is by faith alone without law works. Justification is by faith alone without law works. Galatians 2, write this down, 15, Galatians 2, 15 through 329. The reason why I give you that is because the whole context, the, the Bible was not written in chapter and verse. Amen. It was one long liturgy. It was one long writing. So with that, you have to understand the context doesn't begin just because the, 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 the uh, uh, writers of the gospel decided to put a paragraph heading there. Are you hearing me this morning? Mm, help me, Lord. <laughs> okay? So, justification is by faith alone without law works. That's from Galatians 2.15 through, through Galatians 3.29, and also Galatians 3.7 through 29, those specifically. You got that? The, the fourth prominent doctrine or teaching is Christians can live victorious over sin. Isn't that good news? I don't know about you. I don't know about your life. I don't know what you struggle with or you don't struggle with. I'm here to tell you that the sin that you believe that you struggle with has already been defeated, and you're just thinking that you have to struggle with it. Amen. Somebody told me yesterday we had, men, we had uh, lunch with one of the ministers of the church, and they were telling me that, you know, one of the, and, and I know many churches do this. I just, this is the only church I attend on Sundays. <laughs> so I don't know. 
But yeah, praise the Lord. But, but the reality of it is I know a lot of churches focus on sin, but sin is not the focus of the kingdom. Amen. Victory yes. is the focus of the kingdom. And so what you have to do is you have to understand the victory that has already been established for you. But if you don't know that you've already been made victorious over sin, you will struggle with sin most of your adult life. Can I tell you in the name of Jesus that as a as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel, as being ordained in 1995 under this man's ministry, I have struggled with sin in my concept more than I have in my activity. And what it leads to, it leads to unworthiness. You feel like somehow or another I'm not worthy. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Y'all, y'all, y'all goody two shoes. Y'all are people that have, you know, you ain't never done nothing wrong and you ain't never had nothing wrong. But I'm telling you that the goodness of God far, far exceeds what I think is wrong in my life. And most of us, we don't admit this because we somehow or another feel like if we admit this, we're weak. Most of us struggle with unworthiness. Like somehow or another, I've got to do more to get God's goodness in my life. We're going to focus there when we get there. Amen. Whether we get there today or not. So justification is by faith alone without law works. That's Galatians 2, 15 through 3. I'm sorry. Galatians 2, 15 through 329 and 3, 7 through 29. Number four, Christians can live victorious over sin. Hmm. How about that? Y'all know that, right? I got one yes, yes, and that's right over on this side. This side ain't saying nothing. (laughs) Y'all might have to put some voice to that, I'm just saying. You can live victorious over sin. Why are we struggling with sin in 2018, soon to be 2019? Why? Jesus defeated sin. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. (laughs) <laughs> That's Galatians uh, 2, 20 through 3, 5. Again, I'm giving you the context and the, and the place where you can find all of this, what I'm saying, verify it, don't just take my word. 5, 16 through 26, Galatians 5, 16 through 26, and 6, 1 through 8, will tell you that Christians can live victorious over sin. And this is the, what the Apostle Paul wrote. Last three here. Number five, the spirit of baptism is for all believers. One of the things that I found that has made, allowed me to not quit, not give up, to stay focused on not my calling. Listen to me well. My calling is one thing. <laughs> my destiny is another. Amen. My destiny is I will live with the master forever in a place uniquely designed for me. And I will be in fellowship with my mama, my daddy, my great, great, my brother and I didn't even know our grandfathers. But I believe that they repented and were believers. I can believe what I want to believe. You can't tell me what I (laughs) am. But my destiny is to be with the master to be able to be assigned a position in heaven to do things that I couldn't get done on earth. But because I was obedient on earth, he will put me in a place of his choosing, not mine, so that I can live in the life of grandeur and abundance that only comes from being in his presence 24, 7, 3, 6, 5. And no matter what it looks like down here, down here is just the challenges of everyday life. Sometimes up, sometimes, sometimes down. Y'all ain't hearing, y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. Sometimes I go through and sometimes I run up against the wall. Y'all heard the saying that sometimes the bear eats you and sometimes you eat the bear. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but I know sometimes I feel like that the reality of my life is that I'm up against things that I can't conquer, but I have to be reminded by the power of the Holy Ghost that you have already been made more than a conqueror. So I look at my destiny, not my destination. My destination has an expiration date on it. I only get so many days on this earth, and so do you. Do y'all know when y'all date on this earth ends? Ah, listen to them. Listen to faith talk. 120 years. If you're going to live 120 years, you're going to attend a whole lot of funerals. 
Because not everybody can receive that. Can you say amen to that? So the spirit baptism is for all believers. That's from Galatians 3, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 14. Now, the reason why I'm saying that to you is because you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how many people think they've been baptized and have not been baptized. Can I, can I talk for a minute? <laughs> I remember at a little church called Mount Nebo in Salisbury, North Carolina, back in 1992, I was, my wife and I had gone to the church. We had been there, and we were there, and we were sitting in the sanctuary, kind of like what you are now, and about the same amount of people, I don't know, more or less. We're there, and I had just recently been born again. And in being born again, I didn't know all the stuff that I know now. I just knew that my life needed to change. I knew that from the inside out that Tommy Roberts as a man was very foul and unclean and, and didn't have anything to offer anybody, was believing God for a restoration of his marriage and wanted to make sure that my kids knew that they were, I was their daddy and not some other guy. And before I knew I needed mercy, God extended mercy to me. And he said, listen, if you just believe in me, the Bible says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Yeah. So I believed on the Lord. I believed that he could do the impossible. And he did the impossible in the midst. So I'm standing one day and, and, and I hadn't really by this time we had both been born again. You know, uh, I pulled a fast one on her one day and gave my life to the Lord and she didn't know it. <laughs> We argued about that. Yeah, you remember, right? Okay. Makes sense. Don't leave me out here hanging. Just saying. And, uh, and so, so I came back a couple weeks later, but I knew I needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, yeah. now listen to me well. You need to write this down. <laughs> Understanding is not as important as obedience. Amen. Amen. You need to be obedient even if you don't understand. Because God's got a plan that you won't always understand. He's not obligated to tell you what he's doing in your life. He simply wants you to trust him and learn to trust him in the midst of whatever's going on. Thank you, Pastor Choco. With that being said, so one day we're standing in the sanctuary, and I can't remember the details of the service, and really not important, but as the ministry was going forth, the invitation to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit was there. She and I, I won't make you stand up, but she and I were, if y'all have ever seen my wife and I, don't y'all always see us together? It's rare to see us apart. We've always been like that. We didn't just start this since we've been pastor. We've been like this a long time, okay? You know, and so we're there in the sanctuary, and we're both standing up, and we're standing next to each other. And I just sensed that I needed to move over here because she was cramping my style. And Kelsey, when I tell you that she was cramping my style, the Holy Spirit said, now, I got you right where I want you. Open your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues as I give you utterance. Amen. Now, some people would say, well, you got to lay hands on, you got to tarry. You gotta... No, 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 no. This is a free gift given by God. I, I need a better amen than that. Amen. His presence, he didn't just save you. He didn't just save you. He delivered you. Amen. He cleaned you up. Whether you felt clean or not is insignificant. Amen. Most people get stuck with, I don't feel clean, Pastor. I don't, feel, I don't care what you feel like, you are clean. Amen. Because if the supernatural power of the living God is power at all, it is power of all. So he, when he does a work in you, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that, that he that hath begun a, a good work in you, and it, it talks about that this work is now completed through Jesus Christ. Anyway, so I opened my mouth. I received the Holy Spirit as my guide, my counselor, my friend, and all that. And I'm thankful because I've been living and following his leader for the rest of my life since, since till today. And she did. Now, she went to the other side of the church. She was standing over there. I was standing over here. Why y'all listening and not praying? It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the way we've been trained. Okay. All right. 
I'm just messing with you. Y'all all right? Okay. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and since that time, he's been directing my steps. Now, the challenge with me, just like the challenge with you, is that I don't always believe that he's the one leading my path. Psalm 23 declares that, but I don't always believe that. You know why I don't believe that? Who can answer that question? Because because I don't. Who said it? Right on. Give yourself a pat on the back because I don't feel it. I don't feel like God would lead me down this path. And if, if I don't feel it, then why am I on this path? Now, unless you think that you're smarter than God and you call the shots of your own life, somehow now somebody's wrong. I'm banking on you. So all of the places that I've been from, from, from New York to North Carolina to the Philippines to Germany, Back to North Carolina, to Oklahoma, to Texas, back to North, Car uh, to, uh, to, to North Carolina, then back to Texas, then to Iowa. Somehow or another, God has to have a greater understanding and a concept of destiny than I do. Amen. And no matter what it feels like, he knows better. Yes. Now, in Paul's writing to the Galatians, they forgot that. Let's keep going. Did I leave you at number four? Number five. Number five. So the spirit of baptism is for all believers. Galatians 3, 1 through 5, 13 through 14. Number six. The law of Moses is completely abolished. Say amen to that. We got too many people trying to keep the law. Even, even in a faith, evangelical, free church, still people trying to keep the law. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I mean. After you write your note, look up at me. You know how I know you're still trying to keep the law? Because you feel guilty because of whatever happened yesterday. Ain't nobody saying, thank you, boss. You said, all right, I'll take, I'll take all right. I, did, I didn't pray last night. I, say it again. I didn't pray enough. Come on, talk to me this morning. What's making you feel guilty? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Why y'all sitting quiet? What, what's making you feel guilty this morning? It is a manifestation of the law, not of grace. And any time I feel like I have not, I am not worthy because of something that I, I've done or failed to do, I have put myself back under the control of the law of Judaizers. <laughs> of, uh, uh, I might as well be a Muslim. God help me this morning because Christians understand, understand that the grace of God has been extended to me, even though I wasn't worthy to receive it. Why y'all look at me like that? Anytime that you have to add to your righteousness or try to add to your righteousness by saying three Hail Marys and 12, 12 rubbing the beads together. I don't even know what it's called. I, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you got to do to add to your righteousness has pulled you out of God's grace and put you back into the law and the subjection of the enemy and bondage. Yeah. 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 And next thing you know, you're trying to figure out why this life is not satisfying to you like it once was. The Apostle Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from the grace that was extended to you. I had a, we, we had a quite adventurous day yesterday. Amen. I told my son, I was like, listen, don't matter what you did. Ah, uh, only matters who you are. It's taken a long time to get to this point, but this bunch is mature enough to be able to get here. Y'all mature enough to handle this, right? How much time I got? Look, you need to stop being slow with my time. Cause, cause, cause Bishop, I'm gonna set, we gonna, we gonna set them free. Pass on that. We gonna set them free. What kind of week we have? Tumultuous, yeah. hellish. Yeah. Devil trying to shut my mouth and shut her mouth. Yeah. Trying to shut your mouth. Yeah. Keep you from being a witness. Yeah. What you think? You think he playing? Yeah. 
<laughs> One thing the devil will not do, he'll do what Christians won't do. He will continue to be faithful to his cause. He don't get tired because he know where he's going. So he will pull out all the stops to shut you up. He don't want you to sing not a note. He don't want you to somehow or another bless a life through praise. Oh, God, help me this morning. He does not want you to be effective in the kingdom because he knows his destiny. And he's trying to take you with him. We had a hellish week. She said it. I didn't say it. I wasn't going to say that, but she said it, so I'll take that. That's what it was. My, my, my point is that you have to understand that I know whose I am. And the external things that happen to me are just external things that don't control me. What controls me is my decision, my, 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 my choice to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In, 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 in 1992, at, at, at Mount Nebo, Glorious Church of God, in, in Salisbury, North Carolina, has been enough to carry me here in 2018 against all adversity of the devil. My God, if I made the decision then, it is still a decision now. And the power of God is the one who keeps me, not Tommy Roberts. What number did I leave you at? Six. Did I say six? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the law of Moses is completely abolished. Number seven, backsliders. Did I give you scripture? No? Number six, the law of Moses is completely abolished. Galatians 3, verses 10 through 29. Four, same, Galatians 4, 21 through 31. Galatians 5 and 1. See, what the apostle Paul ran up against is he had taught these people in all of these churches that he'd been to. And he clearly states, I don't know how much I'll read it today or whatever, but he clearly states that he didn't go and confer with all of the people that seemed to be important and significant to the gospel. What he did was he did end up in, in Jerusalem at some point. He talked to James. He talked to John and Peter. That's given. That's a given here. And we'll, we'll get to that. But, he, but, he, but what he says at the conclusion is just as important as, as the beginning. He said that they didn't add anything to what God already showed me. See, I believe, I believe, I believe that God shows us who we are at the initial point of salvation. We just have not unlocked it enough to be able to realize who we are. Right. And, we, and what we do is we subject ourselves. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Pull your religious toes in. At the leading of people, at the instruction of men, somehow or another we've got to submit our gift to another person. And, and when they say that you can be released, then somehow or another you've got the permission to go forth. But I'm telling you by the power of God that when he puts his seal on your life through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the, and, and, and the salvation through Jesus Christ, that you have permission. You might not have knowledge, and he talks about that. You might have a zeal, but not according to knowledge, but you have permission to go out and tell somebody how good Jesus really is. And, and what the enemy tries to do is shut our mouths because we feel like we don't know nothing. But Dave, I don't know as much as you about being in the boundary waters and being a, a person on the outside, but I do know that when I'm out there, I feel good. I do know that what I was, I am no longer because he changed me from darkness and transformed me from darkness into his marvelous light. I may not be able to tell you the scripture. I may not be able to tell you the, the, the exegesis of that scripture, but I can tell you that I'm not the person that I was before I walked into the kingdom of God. I wish I had some help in this place this morning. And so, so people were keeping their mouth closed. And then, then, sadly, they started believing. The Judaizers are the people that were proponents of the law who were telling them, well, you're not really born again unless. When people tell you or try to tell you, this church, y'all know better than this. I don't know about people out there. I don't know about y'all watching by YouTube or whatever y'all watching. But I'm telling you, that what God said about you is greater than what people say about you. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Stop looking for somebody to affirm you. Holy Spirit has already done that. It's 
Number seven, backsliders must be reborn and return to grace. You must be reborn. People say, well, you know, once born, once saved, always saved. You find it, you show it to me. Well, you know, I just believe. And see, what, what the Apostle Paul said in his teaching was that I marvel that you are so soon turned away from the gospel that was once delivered unto you. In other words, today's modern vernacular, you going out here, people going out here hearing all kinds of things to tell them, well, I guess got to bring it back to the old school because I don't know another euphemism. Um, it doesn't take all that. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing to hear. Because somehow or another, it justifies your laziness. Your inattentiveness to the gospel. It's okay for me to skip three, four, five, six Sundays. It's a dangerous thing. When the same apostle that writes Galatians writes at the same time, he wrote at the same time, the book of Hebrews where it says, not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, especially as you see the day approaching. If the day is not approaching now, it will never approach. It's quiet here. Okay. So backsliders must be reborn. I told, again, I told somebody. I won't mention any names. You know, you know, you know. Repentance is easy, but it's not cheap. Amen. John 1, verse 8. You need a better belt or some suspenders or something. John 1, verse 8, write it down, 8 through 9. We've all sinned. Boy, I didn't get one amen on that. We have all sinned. Doesn't make us sinners. John 1, 1 John 1, 1 John 1. For some of y'all that thought St. John, 1 John 1, forgive me. Verse 8 to 9. And so because we've all sinned, there had to be a provision in the covenant yes. for those of us who felt like we didn't need to repent. <laughs> Woo, help me, Jesus. Okay, well, it's going to be a doozy. I'm going to glory that God. We're going to get done here today. So backsliders must be born and return to grace. Galatians 1, verses 6 through 8. Galatians 2, verses 17 through 21. Galatians 3, verse 1 through 5. Verse 10 through 12, same thing. 3, 10 through 12. Galatians 4, 19. Galatians 5 and 1. And four and seven, 16 through 26. Galatians 5 and 1, verse 4. You can read the whole thing. Just say Galatians 5, 1 through 26. I'm just trying to get, yeah, right? Just read Galatians. But I'm trying to help you. 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 I'm trying to, Zach, I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to help you. Galatians 6, verse 1 through 8. I'm trying to help you. That coming from the homework queen. Amen. <laughs> she is a homework queen. Amen. Last one. Last point for this particular introduction. Number eight. All who go back to law keeping are under obligation to observe the whole law or to be cursed. All who go back to law keeping are under obligation to observe the whole law or be cursed. You can find that in Galatians 3, 1 through 5, 10 through 12, Galatians 4, 21 through 31, and 5, 1 through 4. Do I need to repeat anything? Which one? <laughs> From number 8? <laughs> How about I just give you a copy? Gal number 8. Number 8. Number eight, all who go back to law keeping are under obligation to observe the whole law or be cursed. Three, Galatians three, one through five. Galatians three, 10 through 12. Galatians four, 21 through 31. 
and Galatians 5, 1 through 4. Do I need to repeat anything else? Sure, absolutely. Same one? All who go back to law keeping are under obligation to observe the whole law or be cursed. Galatians 3, 1 through 5. Galatians 10, uh, excuse me, 3, 10 through 12. Galatians 4, 21 through 31. And Galatians 5, 1 through 4. Y'all got that? Yes. Do I need to repeat anything else? No. Now, I'm going to tell you why. How much time I got? How much time I got? Everybody said, bless our timekeeper. <laughs> Y'all all right for a minute? I want to tell you something. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. I might have you open them again. I doubt it, but I'm going to have you close them right now. <clears throat> tell you something. I want you to think with me. I want you to use your brain, engage your brain, engage your thinking, because if you engage your thinking, it's going to be more beneficial to you. If you come to church and you just kind of aimlessly go through, we did this. We did this back when we were growing up. We talked about this last week. It wasn't intentional. It was just the way they trained us. You have not been trained this way. You guys are high level frontline warriors for this command post under the, under the leadership of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the captain of the host. He's called you. You can go AWOL if you want to. That's between you and God. Not between me and God and you. You go AWOL, that's on you, not on me. Help me somebody. What do they do with people that go AWOL? Depends on whether or not it's a wartime or not, but they're going to be in deep trouble when they get back. Depends on whether it's wartime or not. Right? But no matter that, they're going to be in deep trouble. If they don't, come back. What do they do, soldier? They'll send a search team out for you. I was in the Air Force. <laughs> I just, it was funny, just the other day I had to send in my, um, my honorable discharge to, uh, to do something. You know, it's funny how the world wants to um, appreciate all the people that serve as veterans, but they don't, they wait until after, you know, you've gone through hell, and then they want to appreciate you, but while you're out there, they don't bother to send a postcard. So I realized that I thought I got out in 92, I got out in 95. <laughs> just saying, you know. So, so from 83 to 95, I was in, in, in the Air Force. And I realized that if I had not, and see, I, there was no obligation for me from 92, for my discharge until 95, I was in the reserves. There was no real obligation for me to go because I'd spent so much time on active duty, 10 years plus, that they didn't come looking for me, right, those three years. I was there, but they didn't, they didn't need me. Point being. But, but my point in saying that is that at any time, they could have come looking for me. Yeah. And if I had not fulfilled the obligation, then they could have held me, made me guilty. Yeah. Listen to me. Now, with that being said, understand this. I'm going to ask you some questions I want you to answer, OK? Yeah. <laughs> OK. What was the original covenant of God with mankind, who was it made through? Mo Moses. But Adam. We talked about this. Yeah. What's next? Adam. Noah. Who next? Abraham. Who is the significant covenant that we live under right now, according to the book of Galatians? Abraham. Okay. God makes covenant with Abraham. He also makes a Mosaic covenant. Fast forwarding beyond that, when does, listen, this is a trick question. Bishop, please don't answer it. Don't answer it. You know the answer to this. None of, nobody on this, all y'all on this front row should know this. If y'all don't, y'all shouldn't be sitting on this front row. Okay, so just be silent on the front row. All right? I'm going to give y'all the benefit of the doubt. When did the New Testament begin? Say that, girl. Say that. The New Testament does not begin in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Y'all know this, right? How many of y'all didn't know that? That's a surprise to you. Bryce, I know you knew this, right? Yes, you did. 
<laughs> he said no. He did. He just didn't know it. Didn't think he knew it. <laughs> so the New Testament, the New Covenant doesn't begin until when? After Jesus. Why is that true? Why? You should be able to tell me why. Nobody from the front row answered. It wasn't it good to sit up on the front row today? <laughs> Even if you didn't know, you didn't have to answer. Why? One simple question. One simple answer. Why? You want to move up here? But why? But why? What happened? Gotcha. Because why? You got it exactly right. Because Jesus' blood ratified and set it forever. Forever. Once the blood is placed, the covenant is fulfilled. Now we live under a new covenant. But it doesn't begin until Acts, right? Yeah. Come on now, y'all know this. Yeah. If you don't, you should. So now Acts kicks in, the book of Acts kicks in, and we see the first century church doing all these wonderful things. Why? Because remember when the angels stood up there and said, they asked him, so why are y'all looking up? You can't bring him back down. He ain't coming back down until the Father releases him. I'm paraphrasing, but y'all know what I'm saying. So, so why are you looking up? He's up there doing his heavenly high priestly ministry, placing his blood on the heavenly mercy seat, all of the courts of heaven, all of the demons in hell are trying to say, not worthy, not worthy, not worthy, but the master, the father says, oh, no, 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 that's enough. The blood has been placed. The blood is pure, is efficacious. It is the righteousness in mankind. Now that it has been placed, I receive the blood and all mankind is free. Y'all know this. So did the Galatians. Because Paul told them. But, say but. They turned away from it. They turned away from it. And they decided that the same thing that the children of Israel who had come out of Egypt when they decided that Moses had been gone too long. God help me. We have decided as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ that he has been gone too long. Now we want to turn back to idolatry and think somehow or another, if I pray enough, if I clap enough, if I give enough, if I show up enough, that makes me worthy. It does not. You can't add to your righteousness. And when you do, think that you can add to your righteousness, you have turned the grace of God into a lie. And you are now under obligation to the law. <laughs> y'all right? Y'all quiet? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I just... be, be, because see, what, what has happened is, and it, it, and it, and it let me give you the note that God gave me. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me. Y'all got, got five more minutes. She, she raised five minutes, and I got to let y'all go because I am committed to making sure that I obey God. Oh, that's not the one. Let me keep going. Thank you, Father. I receive it, Master. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here's what we do. And we've, we've done it because we've been taught it, not because we have heard it from the Holy Ghost. Come here, please, please. We've been taught it, not that we have heard it from the Holy Ghost. Turn to Galatians 2 for me. Thank you, Father. Galatians 2, verse 16. I don't know that I even opened the Bible today, so I better make sure that I open the Bible because some of y'all might think me a heretic. And... <laughs> think somehow or another I'm unspiritual if I don't open the Bible, so. Galatians 2, 16. Anyway. Uh, see, that's why I told you shut up last weekend. <laughs> I love that brother. He's a good brother. Is that, is that the first part of 16? Lord have mercy. This thing is turning. Did I do that? Yes. I couldn't see it. I ain't thinking about y'all. I ain't thinking about y'all. I ain't studying. The old school is I ain't studying y'all. It keeps turning. I ain't touching it. It's turning. You got it? 
Verse 16. We'll close with this. She laughing at men. <laughs> ah, yet we know. Anything that the Bible says that you know, you must know. It's not a suggestion, not an afterthought. That a person is made right with God by faith in what? In who? Jesus in Jesus Christ. Not by obeying the law. And we have believed in what? Christ Jesus. So that we might be made right with God. Because of our faith in Christ. Not because we have obeyed the law. Why is that? For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Now, the reason why that's so, and I'm going to read this from this, my New Jerusalem Bible here, just a minute. The reason why that's so is because you and I could not keep the law in its entirety. Amen. Can I tell you that the Ten Commandments are not all of the law? In the Ten Commandments, even in the Ten Commandments, it was not possible to keep the law of God. I, I, I'm, I'm just giving you a warm up till we get to the fruit of the spirit. But the law of God. <laughs> don't answer again. First row of limits. I'm trusting that y'all know this. If y'all don't know this and y'all fooling me. <laughs> grace be to you. <laughs> Not shame. Grace. Why was the law introduced? Why was it necessary? Come on, y'all know this. If you, if you don't, you should. Why was the law introduced? Move up here. <laughs> they didn't hear what you said. Say it again. You wouldn't know that there was sin unless the law hadn't been introduced. He's right. He's absolutely right. The law had to be introduced. But the law did not have to be kept by you and I. Okay. Good answer, by the way. I'm going to stop calling you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Stay with me now. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. I know I'm running over time, but what is it that makes you feel guilty today? Don't answer. Think about it for a minute. What is it that makes you feel guilty right now? What is it in your life that you feel guilty about right now? You know there's something. You know there's something. Even with these up here, there's something. Even with this one right here, there's something. You feel guilty. We had a bad week. We didn't hug. Did I even kiss you this week? You. you did kiss me. I did. Bishop, she walked up into my chair. I was sitting in my chair. Why am I saying this out loud? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But she, she walked up to me and kissed me on the cheek and just said, I love you. Okay. But I didn't keep the covenant of marriage in terms of making sure that she knew that I loved her back. I didn't reciprocate. Mike, I was just as ornery when she kissed me. I was ornery afterwards. I'm just being honest. I'm trying to help y'all. So, 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 so it wasn't a matter of how I responded, whether or not God loved me or whether or not she loved me. So if I allow that, I can let that make me feel guilty. And then I come in here and I stand like this. I stand in here, and, and instead of raising my hands, I feel constricted because somehow another God is disappointed in me. God help me somebody. What is it? Are you feeling me? Yes. Hear me well. This is my closing statement as I finish this thing. If you would feel guilty about it, you are under the law. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. When, when, he, when he took that, when, when they took, when, 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 the, when, the, when the, 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 the malefactors and all these people took and nailed his hand to the cross, both hands, both feet, put a crown on his head of thorns, all guilt was laid on him, not on you and I. And if you can't get that, you cannot walk in the freedom of the Holy Ghost in this place. 
And the devil is spending way too much time, overtime, to make you feel guilty. I haven't been to church enough. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't given enough. I haven't said I love you enough. I haven't been, oh my God. I haven't been. I have not. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be. It is who you are. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You can't add to it. And you can't take away from it. The Bible says that he is married to the backslider. You and I are in covenant together. You and I, we may not see each other for six years, but when I see you again, because I'm married to you and you know who I am and I know who you are, there is nothing between us but God and his power. And yet the devil will try to raise a fence. I was traveling to Chicago a couple weeks ago. The Lord just dropped a revelation on me. Offense. Say offense. offense. You know what offense is? I'm just going to use this as my prop. It is a fence. I'm offended at you. So in order to get to you, I got to go around the fence. fence. You hurt me, so I got to go around the fence to be able to love you again. Jesus said, woe unto, it is impossible that offenses will come. But he also says that when I come to him and I offer my gift, I have to forgive. Only way to shut down the offense is to. Woman with the issue of blood. I'm finished. Boy, I didn't even hit my note. Okay, I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished because I said I was. The woman with the issue of blood. Y'all remember her? Yes. Somebody tell me some characteristics about her. Persistent. What else? She was what? Rich. Somebody else. What happened? She was sick. What else? She had what? She had faith. What else? Tired. What else? She was a woman, which is a big deal. That's a big deal. What else? She listened to man, but what man? Doctors. doctors. Listen to me now. She listened to the doctors, and what? not only did she listen to them, what did she do? She gave, gave all of her money to the doctors. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question as I, as I shut this thing down. If you give all your money to the doctors, the Bible says that she, she what? She was no better, but rather grew worse. But yet she gave all her money to the doctors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. Stand up, man of God. Stand up, elder. He's representing Jesus. I'm representing a woman. Come right here. Stand right in the middle there. I'm representing a woman. I didn't give all my money to these doctors. Y'all the doctors. I done paid you all. I done paid you all. I done paid you all. Y'all got all my money. How many years? Twelve years. Four after four years, I ain't trying to hear you no more. <laughs> After four years, I love you, but I ain't trying to hear you. Four years, okay, that's all. I run into the master. Yeah. Now listen to me. This is very pertinent to what we're getting ready to deal with in Galatians. After four, eight, 12 years, I run into this guy. And his message, put your hands up. He ain't asked me for nothing. Amen. What's your scheme? What you trying to pull? You trying to pull a fast one. But the Bible says that she had heard, and not only that she had heard, but she said. She said, if I could but. I don't know who he is. I've never been introduced to him. I know them because I have given all my money to them. But I've heard only the word of the gospel preached about him. I've heard that he is a man who is unusual in the miraculous. I've heard that he has the ability and the power of God. I heard like the woman at the well that he told me everything about who I was. I just had to get up out of the bed today and come to church. But in the midst 
midst of that, there's too many people around that are accusers and telling me that I'm not worthy because I must walk down the path and say, I am unclean. I am not worthy. I am not able to stand out here. But beside all that, if I can just not grab, not pull, but Oh, I, I, it is such a difficult thing to believe that if I could just touch, I will be made whole. And the Bible says that she was made whole from what? That very hour. But here's the key to her being made whole. Y'all ready? Ready? I forgive you. You stole from me. Even if you didn't intend it, you took my money. I worked hard for it. I know your thought life was that you would do whatever you could, but you got all the money I'm going to give you. The devil is a liar. I love you, but no more money to you. I'm not giving you no more of my substance. I'm not giving you no more what I had as inheritance. I'm not giving you any more what I worked hard for. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgive you. Oh, I love you. You spoke well and you look good. But what I have is all that I'm going to give to you today. It's all you get. You get no more. But I forgive you. Because without the forgiveness... Stand up. The miracle does not happen without forgiveness. I must touch his garment in forgiveness. I must touch his garment in faith and forgiveness. Because once forgiveness is in place, the love of God can flow. So touching you creates my miracle. But only after I forgive them. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. I think I said this last week, I'll say it again this week. Come on, Kelsey. Where's Randy? Come on. Most of us don't struggle with forgiving others. I know that. I know it. 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 You don't struggle with forgiving others. Yeah, you might have a problem with somebody. You might have an issue with somebody. They might owe you some money. Girl, when you gonna give me my $10 back? I let you borrow $10 six years ago. Man, when you gonna, when you gonna do what you said you gonna do? It, it might be, <laughs> it might be that, that maybe, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, she said, mm. <laughs> just maybe, you said you'd be with me forever. And forever only lasted 10 years. Maybe she said that she would be there always or she would be the one. And it, it turned out to be a disaster after six weeks. But whatever it is, whatever, whatever the harboring of unforgiveness is in your life, what it does is that it moves you out of the grace of God and it causes you to have to keep the law and not look on your brother or sister with lustful intentions, with murderous eyes. What you do, if you're not careful, is you make them an idol. Because they, 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 what, what idolatry does with God is it blocks out the glory of God. It blocks out the true image of the living God. Help me, God. I have to be careful in my, own, in my wife and I's own personal life that I don't let my children or my grandchildren become an idol to us. Anything that deflects or blocks the glory of God becomes an idol. Unforgiveness is the root of all idolatry. If you say this morning, well, you know, I can't forgive them because of what they've done to me. You are right there, right there in the, the realm of idolatry. You may not like what I'm saying. But I don't care if you like it or not. I'm telling you the truth. So this morning, I want to pray. I want to pray for anybody who 
It, it takes courage to stand up in the church and be prayed for. If, you, if you've got some type of issue in your life where you have unforgiveness, I want you to come up front. I want you to come up front and pray for you. I don't care. And, 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 and the challenge is most of us is not forgiving somebody else, it's forgiving ourselves. I haven't always been born again. I do have a past. Now that past is under the blood. But with it being under the blood, it still comes to my remembrance from time to time. The devil's good at that, isn't he? <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1. Somebody find it for me real quick. Read it for me. Galatians 6 and 1. I'm way ahead of myself, but Galatians 6 and 1. Whoever's got a Bible, just open your Bible and read Galatians 6 and 1 for me. Come on, read it for me real quick. Don't care. Don't care what translation or version. Just whoever gets it first, read Galatians 6 and 1 nice and loud. Louder. There you go. Okay. So with that being said, all of us have the same potential for temptation and falling from the grace of God because all of us are, are subject to be overtaken in the fault. I didn't mean to hurt her. She didn't mean to hurt me. So before I can forgive her, I got to first forgive me for, for coming up short in her eyes. Okay. So if that's you today, I want you to come up. I want you because because unforgiveness is going to keep you in the in the realm of having to keep the law. Because what you're doing is you're feeling like I'm not worthy. I need to repent to this person and this person and this person. And and you know what? That becomes law keeping because ultimately, ultimately, there's only one person that we confess. We can confess our faults. The Bible does not say in Galatians 6 and 1, confess your sins. It says confess your faults. If you look that Greek word up, it does not say sin. It is not the same word as sin. It is a shortcoming or, or, or a, 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 a lack of fulfillment of promise. So I might have something. TJ might have asked me to do something. I said I would and I didn't do it. You know, and TJ, may, he's, he's gracious enough. He's, he's tactful enough. He's like, Dad, I love you. I don't care. But, but when I see TJ next time, I know I came short in his eyes. Maybe too simple. Maybe I'm not making sense. Okay. So I got to make sure that TJ knows that I didn't mean to come short. I just did. See, and if I can do that, that means I can forgive me. That means that I can walk in the free flow of the abundance and the grace of God and the power of God like God designed for it to flow. Many people say, well, I don't know why this isn't working for me. Let's start with forgiveness. If that's you, I want you to come up front. Last invitation I'm going to give you. Come up front, and I just want to pray for you. I'm just going to come into agreement with you. I had to forgive. There was a gentleman that, um, from my past, I've said this before, and he in my past, um, he almost, I felt like, I felt like, he was instrumental in the departure and the demise of my daughter. I, my wife knows this. I'm not going to go into detail. And then, um, a few weeks after the departure of our daughter to, to heaven, he almost cost me what I felt like was the life of my son because of his own inner tenderness. And, I, and I, it, it, I, I felt like, you know, I had dealt with him, I had talked to him, but the Lord said you haven't released him from that misstep. And really, it wasn't him that I needed to release from the misstep, it was me. Because I couldn't be there to be a protector over him and I could not be there to be a protector over our daughter. And I was holding and harboring that shortcoming and felt like it was my fault why my daughter had departed because she, she wasn't in the region. And I felt like it was my, part, my fault that, that he almost lost his life. But the Lord said to me one day, he said, Tommy, stop, stop blaming yourself. Whatever has happened has happened and there is a purpose that you don't understand right now, but you will eventually. But you have to trust me. And so, as the body of Christ, come stand in front of me, please. Thank you for your courage. As the body of Christ, we don't admit, according to Galatians 6 and 1, our shortcomings. We have more than we're willing to admit. I'm not throwing any stones, I'm just telling the reality of it. More of us have shortcomings that we know, <clears throat> well, if I did this, if I had done this, if I had made this decision, if I had made that decision, if I had 
marry this guy instead of this, this guy, if I had married this woman instead of, you know, whatever, whatever it is, if I had gone to this school, if I had done this, like, yeah, whatever. And we say, well, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter because everything in the soulless realm does matter. Your spirit is clean. Your spirit is clean. You're going to be in heaven with the Lord, but your soul and its lack of liberty and freedom, which is what the Apostle Paul preached to the Galatian church, its lack of liberty and freedom will cause you to be miserable in this life. And next thing you know, you just don't want to serve Jesus anymore. I wish I could make it simpler than that. I don't know any other, any other way to do it.